All right, guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you guys enjoy this one. This is the first, hopefully, of many exclusive YouTube videos I end up putting out. I know we're just getting started here. The channel is very new. That being said, I do plan on continuing to upload Twitch content as well, really, because that's, that's why I started this channel, just to keep a lot of that stuff alive, stuff that Twitch will eventually erase. Because if you guys are unaware, after 60 days, Twitch says sayonara deletes a lot of the videos unless you highlight them or make clips of them they're gone they're gone so i want to keep a lot of the the stream content stuff i do alive but also for those of you that watch twitch see a lot of my live streams give you guys a reason to stay subscribed hopefully you enjoy this i figured this would be a really good way to start that kind of content because a video like this would be really hard to record live on twitch i think having everyone's opinions right there, right at the moment, would make this kind of hard to put together. So I figured sitting down recording the video like this would be the best way to approach my top 10 retro game consoles. I refrained to save all time. I, I paused there for a second. I thought about saying it, but I'm not going to say it because this list is subject to change. I mean, I'm only 23 years old. I've had very good experiences with all these consoles, a number of very good experiences with all these consoles. Enough to comfortably say I believe this order, and keep in mind it is an order from 10 to 1, this order I feel like really surmises my experiences, how I value them, and personally for me, how much these consoles have shaped the kind of gamer I am, really. So I don't expect everyone to agree with me. If you guys are unaware, my friend Pete Dorr, uh, did a video very similar to this about two years ago now. I was going to say it was kind of recent, but in fact, I looked back. It was like April of 2019. So it just tells you how time flies. Look at this like kind of like a video response. I know I'm dating myself there too, but I kind of figured just sit down, talk through my top 10 retro gaming consoles. And thanks to Pete, of course, for for giving me this idea. I thought it would be a fun video to put my own spin on and, and kind of give my own opinions on. And it's going to be a very different set of uh, consoles, but I think that's what makes this interesting. So anyway, enough rambling. Let's hop in. The reason I wanted to give a little bit of a preamble is because number 10 is the NES. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> I am only 23, like I said, but I have had some very good experiences on the NES. The fact any of these consoles to me are absolute legendary consoles. To have to pick only 10 is very hard to do, and unfortunately, you know, the NES, while I think it's an absolutely stellar console, it's at number 10 for me, considering the experiences I've had. Maybe this video will inspire me to seek out more experiences on that console, but keep in mind, I do stream quite often, and this is a system that just, it doesn't fall into my streaming playlist very often. I don't end up playing a lot of games on this system, despite having some absolute great memories with it. Obviously, I've played, you know, Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. They're all fantastic games. I've played a decent chunk of Legend of Zelda, and I, I absolutely understand why people think it's a revolution in the adventure genre, because it really is. It really is. I, I, I can't argue with that at all. I, I had a, a blast playing what I did of Legend of Zelda, and I wouldn't mind returning to that one, because I feel like it does deserve to get completed at some point. I'm just waiting for that moment. But I think a lot of the reason I, I have this somewhat lower on my list is because a lot of the games, in fact, I would say a very, very large majority of the games on the NES are typically 2D platformers. And it's a genre that I don't dislike, but I also don't absolutely love. It's, it's a genre that I have mixed feelings about, to say the least. And maybe it's because I'm not the greatest at them. I'm sure if I played more, I would get quite a bit better at them. And that's that's probably just a lack of practice speaking. I'm sure it is. But I've played a couple games on stream. I played Darkwing Duck on stream. And I played New Ghostbusters 2, which you guys, if you're unaware, was a PAL exclusive developed by HAL Laboratory. So, like, two excellent games. I mean, Darkwing Duck, developed by Capcom. Excellent 2D platformer. Probably one of the best I've ever played. Both games, though... When I did stream them, I did have to resort to using save states toward the end. And I think that's another reason why I, I tend to hesitate on NES because the games get very difficult toward the end. And I, I think anybody, even if you absolutely adore the NES, you can agree sometimes 
The games get insanely hard or almost unfair. I don't think Darkwing Duck is ever truly unfair, but it does get very, very difficult. Same with new Ghostbusters too. But I, I look back on the NES and I think if I were to stream more, I, I tend to prefer the slightly simpler games. I don't know if, if anybody's in agreement with me on that, but I really like like a lot of the black box games, games like Excite Bike, Kung Fu, Pinball, Wrecking Crew, Balloon Fight. Those all tend to speak to me a little more. I think just the relative simplicity helps. As much as I can appreciate some of the, the really insanely detailed and complex games of the later NES era, I tend to find myself gravitating toward those black box games and some of the earlier ones. And I think if I were to stream more NES, those would probably be ones that I would I would gravitate toward. Obviously, I'm missing out on a lot of different games. I mean, games like Ninja Gaiden, Contra, Metroid, the Castlevania series, Mega Man as well, which I actually did recently buy the Legacy Collection on the Switch. It's sitting back in my collection back there. But I plan to get around to that. Again, I'm just... I know they're going to be difficult. I know I'm going to have to kind of grit my teeth into them. And I think it will be worth the effort once I do it. But admittedly, I'm a little apprehensive when it comes to the NES. I'm not ashamed to admit that. But again, it's had some great experiences on there as well. I, I absolutely have I've loved. Like Excite Bike, I played for hours. I played for hours. Same with Kung Fu. Same with Kung Fu. And games like Top Gun, actually. Top Gun is one that gets dogged on all the time. And I think... A lot of that has to do with the AVGN, of course, is classic video, but I don't find Top Gun to be that bad at all. In fact, I actually really enjoyed my time with it, and even it landing on the aircraft carrier, I know everybody says, man, it's so hard, it's impossible. I don't know, I, f I, feel, like, I feel like I'm in an alternate timeline or something, because I found it not to be that difficult. Of course, it's a little hard, you know, the, the, it's got instructions flashing on screen pretty rapidly, but I had very few problems landing the plane a majority of the time, so I don't know, maybe I got lucky, but that's that's my own two cents on Top Gun. Obviously, NES also has some great puzzle games on it. I mean, Tetris I played the hell out of on, on the NES, and same with Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario on NES, to me, is an absolute classic. But yes, I have a blind spot when it comes to NES. I didn't want to absolutely disregard that. But NES, number 10, I think considering my experiences... It's a very fair placement. And number nine, again, this is this is probably why I had to give a caveat. Number nine is the Atari 2600. I'm sure some of you are scratching your head, like Atari 2600 above the NES. For me personally, I've had some amazing experiences on the Atari 2600 that I've absolutely cherished. And a number of them have luckily been on stream. And I think the console gets dogged on because there's a lot of like just weird games on it games that honestly probably don't even classify 100 percent as games like basic math on the atari i played on stream actually had a ton of fun with it despite it being dumb i just had a ton of fun playing it and in fact i even attempted the speed run which thanks to my friend mecca i know there's some tech to it there's only a limited number of problem sets when i was trying the speed run i didn't know that so i'm sure i could probably shave my time down quite a bit if I went back to it but I don't know it's kind of like a one and done thing we'll see if I ever go back to it games like hangman though when I had my 2600 originally unfortunately I sold a lot of my games during my college years I just I, I didn't feel an attachment toward them and I, I still am definitely more of a gamer than a collector but I, I do kind of regret selling some of this stuff off luckily I got the Atari flashbacks collection on the switch which is an excellent collection it's definitely a weird one but all these experiences that i'm about to talk about have been because of that collection and yes there is a mix of weird and classics it's missing the activision games which we'll get to but it's just the variety i think helped a lot in me absolutely loving this system a lot same with bowling i played bowling on stream for probably only like 20 minutes but it was i have a lot of fun considering it's really not much of a game, but I had an absolute blast playing it. And Atari Video Cube was another one, actually. It was just weird, but absolutely had a ball playing that on stream. And actually reading through the manual, because that Atari collection on Switch actually does have scans of all the manuals for these games, and you can actually read through them. And Atari Video Cube, I would say, is not a very good game, but man, the effort and attention to detail that went into the manual was absolutely astonishing. But those were kind of like the dumb but fun games. I think there honestly are some 
like world class experiences on the 2600. And I think a lot of people wouldn't go as far as to say that, but I honestly think it deserves to be said. Games like Adventure, Adventure to me is one of the best games I've ever streamed. Absolute joy to play. Played it for a couple hours. I beat the small and full kingdoms. The fact that that game came out in 1980 is over 40 years old now. And it felt as fresh as the day it came out, just to me speaks volumes. It's absolute must play in my mind. Even if you don't like the 2600, even if you know you land more in like the PS1 territory, PS2, if you've never played an Atari game before, please play Adventure. It's an absolute classic. Haunted House, another one, almost felt like kind of a spiritual successor to Adventure. I thought was also excellent had its own I wouldn't say it's quite nearly as good but had its own its own gimmick that that made it pretty fun the whole having to search through in the dark definitely added a twist and I, I did stream that one as well and actually turned my lights off and had like a flashlight pointing up at me it was a, a lot of fun then games like wizard which was actually I found out released on the Atari flashback it was a game that got programmed back in the the early 80s but never actually came out so they released it on the flashback. That's a fun one. Very simple, but also intense. Like, very intense when I played it. I was shocked at how intense it was. And then the last one I've streamed, actually, was Night Driver, which is another excellent game. Very simplistic graphically, but an excellent racing game. Excellent driving game. Just found myself getting sucked in once again. It's just, uh, to me, that's the power of Atari. Especially when the graphics are so, so minimal, so basic so primitive and yet the gameplay is just that damn good that you don't care uh, to me that's a sign of just truly great game making and there's so many other games on the atari i could talk about those were just the ones that i've streamed but games like spider-man parker brothers spider-man on atari is a lot of fun joust one of my absolute favorites on the system space invaders of course i did stream crystal castles a bit but i i didn't bother to put it on my list just because i i really didn't play enough of it to to say I finished it or anything. And actually the Donkey Kong game on Atari. It's quite fun. An interesting one too. Because it was published by Coleco. Developed by Nintendo. Released on the 2600. So you had like three companies. You had Nintendo, Coleco, and Atari. All had consoles by the way. And yet you get Donkey Kong. It's just it, To me it's incredible that even released. But kind of a fun version. Definitely stripped down. But pretty fun. Of course Activision was huge on the Atari I need to play more of those. I remember having a lot of fun with Freeway. In fact, that was one that on my old channel with with my brother Trashy, we we did a, a playthrough of just like a that's play of Freeway on 2600. Excellent game. Had a lot of fun with it. But the, I think the 2600 gets dogged on a lot for games like Pac-Man and ET, which honestly I've played both. They're really not that bad. I I don't really understand why they get so much flack. I will say Pac-Man graphically is not very good to look at. It, it doesn't play extremely well, but I don't think it's the horrible game that everybody makes it out to be. And honestly, those sentiments times 10 for E.T. I think E.T. is a very understood video game. Misunderstood video game. My bad. Not not understood. It's very misunderstood. And honestly, if if you if you take the time to get into it and try and play it and, and just wash out any misconceptions or, or preconceptions that you have of the game, I think you'll actually have some fun with it if you give it a shot. I think it's it's really considering the the circumstances behind its development, the rush development, I think it's actually a pretty good game. I'm gonna be honest. So anyways, Atari twenty six hundred, number nine. Definitely missing a couple games though that that I, I want to play soon. Games like River Raid uh, by Activision of course, Pitfall by Activision, and Jungle Hunt are just a few that I'd like to try soon. I'm not sure when I'll get to them. But to me, the Atari 2600, way better than the sum of its parts. Maybe, yes, it's very primitive graphically. Doesn't have a whole lot of horsepower, but it made a lot of the developers just think, how do we make really great games despite that? And I think that should be commended, and I don't think it's commended enough. So 2600, number nine on my list. Number eight, the Sega CDX. And in fact, I have my CDX sitting right here just to show you guys. I absolutely love the system, and I'm sure some of you are going to be like, yo, wait, that's cheating. That's a Sega CD and Genesis. Choose one or the other. Well, I'm putting them together, because not only do I have the system, I kind of view them as, as very similar, and we'll get into that as, as I talk through some of the games here, because I really do think 
the Sega CD in particular was very misunderstood. And I think a lot of the best games on that system that I've actually ended up streaming really are Genesis games just amped to like a new level. They have, you know, better, maybe slightly better visuals, some rotating and scaling from the Sega CD hardware. Plus they have a great CD soundtrack, and maybe just more content and games like Sonic CD. Honestly, I prefer Sonic CD more than Sonic 1. I've tried to get into Sonic 1 so many times and it's a great game. I see why it's it stood the test of time, but I get to Labyrinth Zone and something about Labyrinth Zone just like totally kills it for me. And yet Sonic CD, I streamed to completion in one night. I beat that entire game one night. It's like the first old school Sonic that I beat. Just absolute great memories for me on that one. Same with Earthworm Jim. I played the special edition on Sega CD, which is really just an amped up version of the Genesis version with, with better audio, some new stages, some nice rotating and scaling stuff going on. And it's a phenomenal game. And I beat that in one night too, which was shocking because I've heard so many tales about that game being difficult. And I'm, I'm, really, I'm really proud to say I beat it in one night, honestly. I, considering I hadn't played it before, I, I think that's definitely you know something not to to overlook. I was I was very pleasantly surprised with that one. Also, a great game. I'm not just saying that because I beat it one night. I, I legitimately think Earthworm Jim is an absolute classic. And proof that I'm not biased. If I beat a game in one night, the Terminator on Sega CD, excellent, excellent, excellent version of the Terminator that is exclusive to the Sega CD, and it really just plays like an amped up Genesis game. And with a, with a CD quality soundtrack. And I'm lucky enough. I don't know if you can see it back there. There it is. Yeah. The Terminator. I do own it. Oh, that's one of my prized possessions in my collection. To have that complete in box. But I haven't finished that one. I got to the final stage. I need to finish it someday here soon. But I, I plan on doing that. But it's an absolutely phenomenal game. I can, I can say that regardless. And the reason I like to include the Sega CD here too. Don't worry. I'll get to some Genesis here soon. But I feel like they, they do kind of deserve to be put together, despite, as we're going to get into, some Sega CD weirdness. This is stuff that couldn't exist on the Genesis if it wanted to. Obviously, a lot of FMV games. Games like Panic, that's another one that I own that I'm glad to have. But it's a very weird game. A lot of FMVs. Just a very strange experience. I did stream that one. It's a very weird game to stream, I'll just say that much. There's some uh, questionable content in it, just to uh, say the least. But games like Wirehead 2... FMV game that I think is a little underrated, despite the fact that it's really just a, a QTE collection. I had fun with it. Same with Road Avenger. It's a really well done QTE game, I would argue, because it's actually got hand illustrated aesthetics all around. And then you get like weird shit like Kids on Sight, which I actually did a YouTube review of way back in the day. So it just, I think the amount of variety on the Sega CD is actually quite impressive. Kind of reminds me. Of, a, of another console we'll get to here down a couple numbers but just some some crazy experiences on the sega cd and of course you have the classics that are some of the genesis library like castle and world of illusion starring mickey mouse absolutely great games that i have yet to finish but i plan on finishing you're gonna notice the theme here with genesis a lot of these games i haven't finished games like panic on funkatron toe jam and earl and actually very recently on twitch i streamed the first Toe Jam and Earl, which unfortunately, I don't know if it made for the best streaming game, but I absolutely love the series, so I just went with it anyway, and I had a good time with it regardless. I, I, I had a couple people in chat mentioning that the game was slow, and, and once they said that, I could I could kind of see it, but I still think the game's a classic I and mean, an absolutely great roguelike on the Genesis. Ghouls and Ghosts, another one I need to play. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, a weird one. I have that one actually sitting right there. Played that on stream. That, that made for an interesting stream. Rocket Knight Adventures, Ghostbusters. There's some great, just absolute classics on the system. A lot of which I need to go back and try and finish. But again, that's that that's that old school 2D mentality when it comes to difficulty. It's just a lot of the games you got to put some legitimate time into. And I a lot of them, unfortunately, I haven't given quite enough time. And I plan to change that. But the experiences I have had are so good. I honestly believe that this system still deserves to be number eight. A couple games I have finished on stream, OutRun and OutRun 2019, excellent racing games. I know OutRun is not quite, you know, arcade perfect. It's definitely not, but I had a plenty of fun with it, honestly. And OutRun 2019, I believe might be exclusive to the Genesis. I'm not sure. That one was actually a really cool kind of futuristic take on the OutRun series that I really, really enjoyed. And VR Troopers, 
which is a really random one for me to have streamed, but I streamed it. <laughs> I played it. And it was like just like a fun, kind of janky fighting game that actually just oddly and kind of knocked my socks off a bit. I just had a, a lot of fun with it. And of course, the Genesis also has a bunch of like obscure stuff that, that people don't talk about all that much. Games like Socket, which really is just kind of a, a Sonic clone in all honesty, but it's got some great visuals. Uh, games like Steel Empire, a uh, it's like a it's almost like a steampunk kind of horizontally scrolling shooter that I, I had a lot of fun with back in the day and I, I should revisit. And then Subterranea, again, another another that one's more like a free roam shooter. Um, with adventure elements that I'd I'd like to try on stream again, but of course there's there's classics that I've failed to mention. Again, I I tend to seek out a little bit more of the the weird and obscure. But anyway, yeah, Sega CD X I would consider to be my number eight pick. I I think it deserves that placement considering the experiences I've had. I've I've honestly had some wonderful experiences on the system, and I hope to have more. Moving on, number seven. Number seven to me is the N64. I think this is the perfect placement for this console because really I haven't played a whole lot on it, but keep in mind the library is not all that big when you really look at it. It's not a huge library and we all know about the decision of Nintendo choosing to use cartridges over CDs may have bit them in the ass when it comes to other devs, but of course the, the first party Nintendo content was as strong as ever, if not even more strong. I mean, Super Mario 64, absolute classic game, even though maybe it's got some control issues, some camera issues. I'm just going to say, I still absolutely adored that game, despite the, the minor critiques. Star Fox 64 was also an excellent game. Mario Party, the Mario Party series got its start on N64, an absolute classic series that extended through the GameCube era and was an absolute joy to play with friends. And Paper Mario, one of the few RPGs that I've played on stream to completion. It was an absolute joy to play through. It was one of my earlier streams when I was just starting out. Uh, still, you know, a young buck with very few viewers. But the people that were there were very cool. And we had a great time playing through Paper Mario. It was just absolutely fond memories playing through that. And it helped get me into RPGs, even though I, I still tend to shy away from them. It definitely made me more open the the idea of of playing more in the future but i also think of the n64 as just like a great racing console honestly the cruising games to me believe it or not are like some of the the system defining titles i think i don't know why that is but i absolutely adore them cruising usa of course cruising world which to me is even better than cruising usa cruising usa does have its flaws i did play it on stream a couple months back and it's it's not the perfect game that i remember Although I don't think it was perfect at the time either, but I just had a ton of fun with it. But Cruisin' World is excellent. I think it's probably the closest you get to like an arcade perfect smash on the N64. And then Cruisin' Exotica, which was a bit of a letdown, but to have the whole trifecta on there, just those those games are forever associated with the N64 for me. But continuing on the racing genre, of course, you have Mario 64. How could you forget Mario 64? The Rare Racers as well, Diddy Kong Racing. Mickey Speedway USA. And then you get into stuff that's just unique and weird and just oddly, oddly good, despite what you might think, like Beetle Adventure Racing. I know this one's gotten talked about quite a bit more in the last couple years, and I think the retro community, especially on YouTube, has done a good job covering that game and definitely giving it the attention it deserves, because it's honestly an excellent racing game, and you you wouldn't necessarily expect it from, from a, a licensed title like that. And some of my personal favorites... That I, I stream both of these, and these are excellent games that kind of take the kart racing genre and kind of flip them on, on its head. That's Snowboard Kids 1 and 2. I absolutely adore both of these games. They're they're excellent. I, I can't believe I hadn't gotten to them sooner, but I got to stream both of them for the first time, and they were just both absolute joys to play through. Snowboard Kids 2 got a little difficult toward the final boss, but I had a lot of fun with both of those, and they definitely spoke to me because I absolutely love kart racers. I, I've gone on record saying kart racers are my favorite genre, and it's nice to see a lot of the mechanics used in kart racers done in a different way, you know, putting their own little twist on it. And I thought the whole the whole snowboard racing idea was, was a unique way to take kart racing. But of course, N64, like I said, the, the library's not huge, but 
there are a ton of games I still need to play, like Ocarina of Time, Kirby 64. I'd love to play Mario Tennis, Pilot Wing 64, 1080 Snowboarding. Like the list goes on and on. All the rare games like GoldenEye, Perfect Dark. There's there's a ton that I'm missing out on, and I'm well aware I definitely need to get on that, <laughs> to say the least. It's it's been a long time coming, but like I said, N64 games that I've streamed have just been almost exclusively great, except for Powerpuff Girls Chemical Extraction. But we'll forget that exists. Otherwise, I've had just back to back just great experiences. So. I plan to continue playing N64. It's a console that maybe I haven't given enough love over the years, but I've I've been coming around on for sure. That's that's the least I can say. Number six. Probably wondering what number six is, and that is the Dreamcast. I think this console is it's quite underrated. I think I've even been guilty of underplaying the significance of this console and it's a shame because there's some excellent games on this. And the unfortunate thing about the Dreamcast is it just really did not get to last as long as it maybe should have. And it's it's a shame because there's some, honestly, some of my all-time favorite gaming experiences have been on this system. I mean, the Sega was just at the peak of their game in my mind for arcade-style games. And the Dreamcast really felt like they were bringing the arcade experience home with games like Crazy Taxi. Absolutely adore Crazy Taxi. If I had to make, you know, a top... A top 50 games of all time, Crazy Taxi would definitely have a spot on there. 18 Wheeler is actually a lot of fun. That's one that probably gets overshadowed by Crazy Taxi, but it's a very different game and I highly recommend you play it because it's a lot of fun and that's one that I, I always played on the Dreamcast. House of the Dead 2, I will forever link with the Dreamcast and having the light gun. Typing of the Dead, of course, with the keyboard peripheral, how can you forget that? And then you just get weird stuff, absolute weird stuff like Seaman which I did own at one point with the microphone attachment and everything. Very interesting game that, honestly, if it weren't for Sega, probably wouldn't exist. And games like Space Channel 5, a great a great rhythm game that, that gets overshadowed. I have yet to beat, but I, I do want to revisit it. I actually have the special edition for PS2 that has both games, Space Channel 5, 1 and 2, and I would like to get through those at some point. They're very difficult games, though, especially toward the end. But Shenmue, another one. This is probably the seminal Dreamcast title, if there had to be one. Shenmue, absolute unique experience that I've, I've never quite had before or since, really, in all honesty. And it's a shame that it took me multiple tries to get through the game. I, I've heard this multiple times. I think I think Pete said the same thing. I know Adam Korolik, who is a devout Shenmue fan now, has even stated himself, like, back when I was a kid, I had to try the game a number of times before getting into it. And I was on the same boat. It, it takes a while to to really get into the atmosphere of Shenmue. But once you do, it's it's really unlike anything else. And I know it sounds corny, but I, I seriously, firmly believe that. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I feel bad that it, it took me getting the Steam version to actually beat it. But, you know, it's like, what can you do? What can you do? Other games on the Dreamcast that I absolutely enjoy. Another system that's great for racers, honestly. San Francisco Rush 2049, fun arcade port. Revolt is an excellent game that I, I think gets talked about. I've, I think I heard Metal Jesus mention it in a hidden gem video or two. Speed Devils is one that I very rarely get heard talked about, but I, I found that one to be a lot of fun back when I had my Dreamcast back like in the high school days. And... Had a lot of fun with that one. So excellent system for racers. But yeah, that basically sums up my my experience with the Dreamcast. I know there's a ton I still need to play. Games like D2, although I'd have to play D1 first, of course. Power Stone, Hydra Thunder, I have yet to play. Dynamite Cop, Sonic Adventure, I'm a little hesitant to try because of my experiences with 3D Sonic. I'll just, I'll leave it there. But uh, yeah, I, someday I would like to get to a Sonic Adventure. I hopefully enjoy it when I do. South Park Rally. I like my kart racers. I gotta try it. South Park. I'm sure it's not very good, but I'd love to try it. Disney's Magical Racing Tour. Another kart racer. I've actually heard that one's decent. But yeah, there's a ton of stuff on the Dreamcast. A lot of multi-plats from like the PS1 and 64 era that end up looking better on the Dreamcast. So I'm definitely looking out to get a Dreamcast again. I'm I'm kind of sad I sold my my old Dreamcast, but I do want to get a new one for streaming purposes, and I think I'll have a lot of fun with it once I do. So number six, Dreamcast. Number five, this one is probably gonna be a very divisive one, and that is the.